Have you ever thought about exactly how devices are equipped in our office when we build up an IP-based telephony system? In this video, we will walk you through the deployment of IP PBX, IP phones, and SIP trucks in the local network environment of the office. Well, first thing first, what's a local network environment in the office? In simple words, the local network environment, professionally called LAN for local area network, is consisted of a router and devices connected to it, such as your computer, smartphone, or any type of IP-based equipment. Usually, switches will be deployed to connect more devices to the router. If we connect broadband to the router, all the devices will be able to access the internet. A router is more like the main port that controls the traffic to the outside world. Now, let's turn to our internal system. In this video, we'll make use of the following devices. A switch connected to the local router. A Yaster S300 VoIP PBX. A Airlink IP phone. And a laptop for configuring all these devices. We need to finish two major tasks on each device. The first one is to set the network interface of the device. Make sure they're under the same IP segment and following the local network rules so they would be accessible from each other. We will take the following information as an example, then connect all mentioned devices physically into the switch. Let's start with the IP PBX and the laptop. Finish the hardware installation and turn on the power of the PBX. If you want to learn more about the hardware installation, Please check the length video. Now we're going to configure the PBX network interface with the laptop. So first, connect the LAN port of the PBX to the computer's network interface with an Ethernet cable. The default IP address of the PBX is 192.168.5.150. We're supposed to set the laptop IP address to the same network segment. Now open the browser. Enter the default IP address of the PBX. You will actually get a warning notification. Never mind, it's totally safe for private access. Here we are, the lock interface. Enter the default account information and log in. Click on Settings and select the network. Go and change the PBX IP address using the rules mentioned just now. Fill in blanks one by one correctly. Save and apply it. Reboot the PBX to make the configuration work. Just wait for a while. Meanwhile, don't forget to change the laptop's IP address to the same network segment. Now, enter the new IP address of the PBX in the browser. We can access it again. Our configuration works. Now we're OK with task 1 on the PBX and laptop. Let's go straight to task 2. Connect the LAN port of the PBX to the switch. And connect the laptop to the switch as well. Both devices have been connected to the same local network environment now. Let's see how to deploy the IP phone. We modified this IP phone's IP address already. If you want to learn how to change the IP address of an IP phone, please check the phone user manual. Now, simply connect the IP phone and the switch with the port Internet. Our PBX and IP phone have been deployed successfully. It is the time for SIP trunk configuration. Here's the Ethernet cable of the SIP trunk provided by the service provider. Well, generally speaking, there are two types of SIP trunk. One provides the voice services as well as the Internet service, while the other one provides the voice service only also known as SIP dedicated trunk. The way we deploy these two types of SIP trunk is different. If the internet service also goes through the same ethernet cable, connect the cable to the router directly. Since we have connected the PBX to the switch, the PBX will be obtained both the voice service and the internet service through that cable. At the same time, other devices connected to the router will be able to access the internet through that cable. Well, how about a SIP dedicated trunk? Now, we're supposed to configure PBX WAN port and connect the cable with voice service to it. Log in to the PBX. Still, go to the network setting page, set the mode to dual. 
so the WAM port will be enabled. As we recommend, set the LAN port as the default interface. Configure the WAM port using the information provided by the service provider. Here's an example of IP information. Fill in the blanks. Save and apply the settings. Reboot your PBX. Simultaneously, connect the network cable to the WAM port of the PBX. Besides, we'll need some extra work to configure static routes. So both the LAN port and the WAM port will work in order. Log in again. Go to the network setting part. Find the static routes. All the rules for the LAN port will work because it is the default port. What we need is to create a rule for the WAM port. Choose Static Routes, click on Add, fill in the information according to the message provided by the service provider. Then choose the WAM port, save and apply the configurations. The new rule has been added to the routing table. Now both ports will work normally. All right. That was all for the SIP dedicated trunk configuration. You've just learned how to deploy the IP PBX together with an IP fill and a SIP trunk in the LAN. Next, we suggest you guys watch our S Series PBX Quick Start Guide and Basic Configurations video tutorials. Learn how to establish a phone system for an enterprise. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. Get more details. Check our document center. I will see you in the next one.